So in this video, we are going to cover the multiple different ways in which we can adjust our gain structure when working from within Studio One. All right, so I am preparing a song for a mix, and when I, when I prepare anything for a mix, I like to break it up into two different segments. First of all, is I almost think of it as like admin work. It's color coding. It's phase optimizing multiple channels, like multi-track drum files. It's adjusting my basic gain staging structure on the individual elements, and sometimes if the mix is already in good shape, I might adjust it at the very end of the chain, and then I might just adjust a couple tracks for if I know I'm gonna use an analog uh, gear or an analog signal chain on a lead vocal, I might bring that down and then adjust the fader so that it sounds good with the static, just to kind of get everything sorted, okay? So first things first, I think this differs if you work by yourself and you're always recording and producing and you tend to work at the same levels, you tend to monitor at the same levels, record things at the same levels that you probably have your own gain structure in place and it's probably, you don't even have to think about it. You just record a track, you adjust your fader and it sits well and you leave it. But this really becomes evident when you start mixing projects from other people, where potentially the gain structure is very different than if you were to do it yourself. Now, in some cases, if you're just polishing off a mix or finishing something up, it's easy to kind of like work with whatever you have. In other cases, or if you're maybe OCD and you like to have things at a very, very specific level for how you work, then maybe you're going to make some changes. Okay, so first things first, and this one is pretty obvious, but we'll talk about it anyways. That is, let me find it, see if I can find a track that is not automated here. Okay, we have a fader. This allows us to have a really easy way in which we can adjust our gain structure. Okay, this is minus 14.5, I can turn it up. All right, now, next up, um, we have one of the things that I used when I very first came to Studio One is we have event gain. So if I solo this over here and I click, hold and drag this little dot, we have the ability to adjust. And this is giving us um, the, the total amount that it's been adjusted from zero. Now this is at, for example, let's go to like minus nine. If I grab this again, notice that it says on the left, it's already at minus nine and I could bring it down another two and it's at minus 11 from where it was, okay. This is a good way that if I have something and it's a static mix and I receive it and I like everything and the mix sounds good, but it's just, it's coming out of the stereo or the main outs that too loud and I need to give myself headroom. Then what I might do is select everything if it's all the events and I might pull them all down by a very specific amount that could easily be 10 dB. Sometimes it could even be more and it would be just like select all, pull everything down. You have the exact same mix, except it's quieter. That's something I'll do if there's no plugins or anything on the track and I just want to get it going. But one kind of downside to that, especially when you're working with tracks that, that end up being recorded very low, is notice that if you're in a super zoomed in state, or rather zoomed out state in terms of our vertical zoom, that you can't see the waveforms anymore. So what you end up having to do is cranking this up just to be able to see the waveforms when you're, when you're in a small vert vertical zoom setting. So for this reason, we also have another option, which is something that they added in Studio One, I believe it was version 4.6, and that is the input trims. If you're not seeing these, you click the wrench options icon in the top left of the console, and you can choose input controls. When you have input controls, we have the ability to basically do the exact same thing. So if we play from here, if I wanted to turn this up all the way, if I wanted to really, really bring it down, this gives us a lot of wiggle room. Now, sometimes if a mix sounds good and I don't mind the waveforms sitting where they are, if there hasn't been dynamics processing added yet, if I needed to turn everything down in my whole entire track, I might select everything and then say, right, I'm gonna just go minus 10. Now, the only thing you have to be careful of this is if you have some tracks that are sent to a bus channel and then the bus channel is then sent to the main outs, you would only need to turn down either the bus channel or the source tracks. So you wouldn't want to turn both of them down. Otherwise, what we just did would turn those, maybe the drums would be turned down 20 dB instead of 10. Okay, so we've covered event gain. We've covered trims. Now the main times that I wouldn't use event gain or trims would be if there was something that's put in place ahead of time, uh, which would be dynamics-based processing, like a compressor, 
that is dependent on a level and a threshold setting. So if everything was already dialed in and and it was sounding exactly as it should, if I turned the event gain down or the trim down by 10 dB, I would obviously completely change that relationship. So in those cases, we actually have something I did for a long, long time, uh, especially when I worked in Pro Tools and then even when I came from Pro Tools into Studio One, we have the ability to add a utility plugin, which in Studio One is called a mix tool. Now, why would I ever use a mix tool when we have all these different options? Well, if we're talking about that case where maybe something is, I need to turn it down 10 dB, but I have a compressor that's reacting and it's been signed off by the producers and I don't want to change that. If there was a compressor that was reacting to something, I would leave the compressor in place and I would just put a mix tool down and then I would turn this down by minus 10. And then what I'd probably do is select the actual fader. In this case, it's set to read mode, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, this would give me the ability to change where my fader is sitting. So if it was really, really low and I wanted to bring it up, I might control the gain structure of the track by simply putting a mix tool in and then giving myself a little bit more resolution on a fader. That being said, I don't think there's that much of a problem these days uh, by holding down the, even if this was down here, by holding down the shift modifier, I can get fine level detail control by just holding shift and I, you know, versus if I try to click hold it, we're at 47, look, I moved it a tiny amount and it just jumped 10 dB. When we're at zero and we try to adjust 10 dB, that's 10 dB when we're at zero. It's, it's, it's a very different throw, whether you're mouse clicking or also if I'm on the fader port over here and I take this, I can have, I got this really nice bit of resolution where I can kind of jog this and I'm only going up or down like 2 dB. So if I need to change the sweet spot of the fader, I will consider using a mix tool. Now, another area that we can adjust things is by using a bus channel. So I'm going to highlight all of these drums. I'm going to right click and I'm going to add bus for selected channels. Okay. So now this gives me multiple levels where I can adjust the gain structures. So if I was to play this, these drums, I can adjust using the trim. I can bring this down 10 dB. I can bring it up 14 dB. Now keep in mind, if I had dynamics processing, compressors, dynamic EQs, anything like that, then this would be how I would want to adjust the gain structure potentially by going into a bus channel and either using the trim or simply by, you know, lowering the fader. While we're on that note, there's another way that we can adjust and it is especially useful in situations like this where these tracks came to me with automation already enabled on them. If I was to try to adjust anything here, any of these levels, if I said like, okay, these overheads are too loud, let me bring them down. Bring it down, watch what happens when I push stop. It's just going to jump back to where I was. In those cases, we have the ability to select the channels that we want within the console. We can right click, we can add a VCA for selected channels. Now, when we add a VCA for the selected channels, let me push these, make sure we can see this. This VCA is now con connected to all of these. You can click hold and see the targets. This will show exactly what's connected to this VCA. I can now click hold and drag and notice it's hard to see, but maybe let's see if we can go like this. Notice that as I move this up or down, that this is a relative offset. So this is a great way for if you have something where they're, they're committed to the automation, that's what they want to have, and you're receiving the session, if I need to adjust the gain structure of this for any reason, any reason at all, I can do that with a VCA. And the other thing that I can do is if I adjust the gain structure to fit my mix, and then I decide that this is a perfect gain structure, I can actually right click this and we have the option to merge the VCA automation. Watch what happens when I merge the VCA automation. That makes the VCA offset the new level and it writes it into that actual source tracks. So if I had 20 source tracks and they all had crazy automation and I turned everything down by 5 dB and then I merged that automation, then all of the tracks, the automation would adjust based on the offset that I made with the VCA. So we have event gain. We have bus channels. We have the ability to adjust the trims. We have ability to use the VCAs. I want to talk about one more thing. And then I want to talk about kind of like a side note on something. And then we're going to call it with this video. 
This is something that was added somewhat recently. I can't remember the exact reason uh, or the exact version, but gain envelope. We have clip gain. What is clip gain? Clip gain is beautiful. Clip gain allows me to make adjustments and this is pre fader. So this is the same as if I was to snip this audio event and then lower just this event. But the other benefit here is that I can do things and like, for example, use the automation tools that we have. We could even do things where we draw it in if we wanted to. I don't ever use a draw tool, but we could draw things in manually. Typically speaking, I would like to make a highlighted range selection so we could adjust different parts. So we have so many different ways that we could adjust the automation. Maybe you're happy with something overall, but in one particular section, it's triggering a compressor way too much because maybe the the drummer hit the kick drum really, really loud and you say, right, I need to trim that down by like two or three dB. So maybe you're evening out some uneven hits, right? You have the ability to do this with the clip gain line. And again, this is something you do by clicking the event, right clicking, and then you can see the gain envelope. We also have the ability to bypass the gain envelope as well too. You can see those changes that are happening in real time. So we have our clip gain, we have our event gain, we have our trims, we have our actual faders. We know that if our faders have automation on them that we can use VCAs. We can also send things to a bus channel. That bus channel, we can adjust the fader level or the trim level or both. Maybe we bring the fader down a little bit or, the, or rather the trim down a little bit and then maybe we automate the bus channel. We could also take those bus channels that have been automated and that you could link them all to a VCA and offset everything or automate everything further. There's so many different ways that we can adjust the gain and get control of your gain structure. Now, my last thing, the last part of this video that I really kind of want to drive home is although we've been talking about all sorts of different things, in some cases, there's no need to overcomplicate something. If something comes to you and it's way too loud for the particular way that you prefer to work, Take a look at what I did here when I'm setting up the rough gain staging for this mix. Everything is going to a mix bus, right? This mix, the, uh, everything is going to a bus channel. I just pulled everything back by minus eight. Why did I pull it back by minus eight? Because I know that I'm going to use an analog compressor. And I know that I need to hit that analog compressor based on the way that it's set where I don't ever change this. The threshold is always fixed. Nine times out of 10, I'm using the same attack and release, the same side chain, I have the transformers engaged. I hit it at a certain point till I get maybe two dBs of gain reduction, or maybe on the louder parts, it might go up to three. Maybe I just want one dB of gain reduction. Having everything sent to a bus channel, I can pull down the entire track, or I can push up the entire track. So that would be an example of not overcomplicating it. Now I may be mixing this and decide to myself, hey, I need to automate, or I wanna use a, an analog compressor on my lead vocal or an analog EQ on my lead vocal. And then I may go to that lead vocal and it may be way too loud. Guess what? It's not a big deal. I'll just grab the trim of that one plugin or that one channel and I'll pull it down or I'll grab the event gain and I'll pull everything down a little bit. I'll get it hitting my compressor the way that I want, and then I will basically just adjust my fader to taste till it blends into the track. The point is understanding all these different places in which you can adjust gain so that you don't box yourself into a corner and make life difficult for yourself. If I'm doing something super quick or I, I need to work on a really tight budget, I'm going to take some shortcuts. I might leave the whole entire gain staging process in place as a starting point where the artist did and just concern myself with making sure that my stereo mix output is at a very specific level to interface with my outboard gear. And then if I wanted to add processing on individual channels, I'll do them one at a time. If my faders are out of whack and they're way too low and I don't have enough resolution, I'll throw a mix tool on and I'll set it to minus 15 just so I can push a fader back up to zero so that I could automate it further and get it to sit in the mix right. It doesn't have to be complicated. There's a lot of different areas that we can change the gain staging and hopefully I've covered everything so that everybody understands exactly how to kind of take control of your session or your production and work with it. Obviously, we're talking about audio. If we talk about virtual instruments, guess what? We have volume knobs on the main outputs of the virtual instruments. We have trims. We have different ways that we can control that gain staging as well. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.